what's going on, everybody? Welcome out to the weekend wrap up with the Game Time Guru, joined by Miles. Uh, again, we're going to be talking about this weekend's events. We're on our drive into work after the gym. So, first, we're going to start off with the Boise State basketball game this weekend. Uh, Miles is with me as we watched, you know, history was made, basically. Uh, Chandler Hutchison dropped a 44 piece on San Diego State, uh, broke the record for the most points ever scored in a single game by one single player uh, at Boise State. I want your general, sorry, just your thoughts, your general thoughts on the game and the atmosphere at uh, Taco Bell Arena in Boise. Yeah, man, it was actually surprisingly loud. I think, I know it was a quote-unquote sellout crowd. Uh, there was quite a few empty seats still. I bet we had 10,000 in the house. Um, it got loud at times, and uh, especially when the refs blew that call on that foul um, or missed it. But, I mean, it got loud. It was surprisingly energetic throughout most of the game. Um, like, you know, we always say Boise is an event town, so obviously this was kind of an event. We had uh, two teams with great records coming in to play each other, kind of San Diego State, that, I guess, upper echelon of the Mountain West Conference. So it was a huge game for Boise State. The crowd was in it. We were in it. We're the very last row in the nosebleeds, but it was still, like, there's not really a bad seat in Taco Bell Arena. So it was a lot of fun. And then, like you just mentioned, we got to witness history. Hutchinson went off. And, man, it was a ton of fun, Like. Now it's got me thinking, like, do I want Boise State season tickets next year? I know I don't because Boise State's Boise State basketball, but, man, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and I'm trying to think if I've ever seen a better performance than that the other night. I know there's been some good ones dating all the way back to, like, the Roberto Bergerson days, the Derek Marks days. Um, I want your thoughts. Have you ever seen a performance like that, at least from Boise State basketball? Boise State basketball? No. And, like, I remember, didn't Hutchinson have, like, the first 16 points or something? Like, we were watching it, and we just, like – Dude, he scored again. He scored again. He scored again. And then what that did is it opened it up. And other players, you know, we had, I think, two other players with 15 and or 16 and 12 and something like that. And, I mean, he he tore it up. I've never seen a Boise State player do that. And, I mean, I don't think you see that very often in college basketball either. It was, it was a special night for him. Yeah, it was awesome. And uh, for two people, we've we had season tickets for Boise State football for, like, the last seven years. Um, and we know that Boise State football is dominant here in the Treasure Valley, but it seems like it's actually – it's nice, again, to have, a, you know, some success on the basketball court uh, because it does – you know, it's starting to draw a little bit more attention like the olden days. So I'm excited about that because you only hear about the football team nowadays, and now we're getting a little bit of both, um, whereas in the olden days it used to be basketball was good, football sucked. Now it's football's good, basketball sucks. Now it's a little bit of both. I think it's good for the school. It's good for the Valley. Uh, it's good for the fans overall. Um, let's jump into the NFL. Uh, crazy weekend in the NFL. You mentioned some. First off, I want to talk about the Saints and Vikings game, but what did you think about the fans? What did you tell me about the fans for Minnesota? Oh, man. That was, that was like the college atmosphere, but in an NFL stadium. Like, I don't know, just watching it before the game, everybody in unison clapping their hands. Like, you know, it looked like a college – like college tradition, um, looked like college station, but like on steroids. It was so loud. I just remember listening to the commentators before the game started, like Troy Aikman and Joe Buck, they were yelling almost like that <laughs> just to talk over the crowd noise. And then on Diggs' touchdown, uh, dude, that had to be the loudest touchdown in uh, probably history. Like that, it just was – I think everybody blew out their speakers on their cell phone because that, that was loud. Man, they showed that sideline camera, like that was on the sideline where he was coming towards them to to show the the sound of the crowd when that happened. It was insane. But yeah, somebody wrote on Facebook like, uh, "Turn down your headphones if you're planning on listening to this," because it was so loud. And so I didn't get to see the beginning of the game when you you texted me and you said this crowd's insane or something like that. You were talking about the Minnesota crowd. Well, at the end of the game, after that touchdown, they made the team come back out and kick the extra point. So there was already the celebration. Teams were in the locker room. Um, the, it was a, it's a stupid rule in the NFL, but the fun, fun part of it was Case Keenum, quarterback for the Vikings, starts the chant for the skull chant, that, that clap in your hands thing that you are just talking about. And it was like yeah. the craziest thing. The whole crowd's going crazy. They had to kick the extra point. Uh, and I was like, yeah, Miles was right. This crowd is insane. Now, speaking of Case Keenum, Let's look at the quarterbacks that are going to be in the conference championships this upcoming weekend. We've got Keenum, Bortles, Foles, and Brady. I should have said Keenum, Foles, uh, Bortles, Brady. How crazy is that? Who? <laughs> right? <laughs> Seriously, like, that is insane because 
This reminds me, I can't remember the year, it was like 99 where you had like, uh, oh, just these old players like Gus Farrar, Trent Dilfer, Rob Kelly, Sean King, like these people nobody like heard of, these quarterbacks who were just facilitating a team. I, I don't understand how, like I watched Bortles yesterday and I know everybody, he, he's got his doubters and everything, but that's for good reason. He's not a good quarterback. I swear half the time he just throws it up and the guys go up and make a play or he throws an interception. Uh, Case Keenum. Like, yesterday, he made some great throws. He also made some stupid decisions. You know, he took a, sack, a couple sacks when he shouldn't have. He threw an interception when he shouldn't have. Um, and then Nick Foles, are you kidding me? Like, I, I was sitting there, and they showed the playoff bracket, and I looked at it, and I was just like, oh, my gosh. Like, this looks like 1999 with Dante Culpepper, Donovan McNabb, uh, Tom Brady again, and then the Jaguars, like, the Garrard years or whatever, like, or Mark Brunel years. Like, it's just like – it's a throwback to when I was 10 years old and it's kind of fun and exciting. But then at the same time, I'm like, this is, this is, is this going to be good? Are the Patriots just going to walk all over the Jaguars and then walk all over who's in the Super Bowl? Um, I think if the Vikings can win and make it to the Super Bowl, they have a chance against the Patriots just because of that defense. Like that defense flies around. They're high energetic, like, man, but what the crap? How did these two teams make it? No, exactly. It's 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 fitting because this NFL season. Whenever I ask somebody what what the season was like, the word weird always comes up because it was. It was just a, a weird, strange season. Teams that we're not used to seeing got in, and then you see in this last round, the divisional round, you got to see you know Matt Ryan go down, Drew Brees go down, Ben Roethlisberger go down. Like all these guys were lost. It was all these vets. So it's almost like a changing of the guard. Except I don't actually believe it's a changing of the guard now that I'm thinking about it because I I really don't have faith that any of these quarterbacks, like Keenum's the backup, Foles the backup, and Bortles should be a third string. So it's like you never know what's going to happen next year. Maybe they'll never get an opportunity again. But first, I want to just, before we end it, you mentioned, you know, if the Vikings make it past the Eagles, which they're going into a buzzsaw, basically, like a sawmill over there. It's like the Eagles got some sort of mojo, one of the best coach teams I've seen. Um, but if they can make it past them, here's the reason I think they could win, even if the Patriots make it because they're playing in Minnesota. The Super Bowl's in Minnesota. They'd be the first team to host it. And that crowd, like we just said, is nuts. So if they could actually host their own Super Bowl in their own town, I think it'd be crazy. I just want your thoughts before we end it. Who's making the Super Bowl and who's winning it? So I think it's going to be the Patriots and the Vikings. And real quick, I don't think it's a transitioning, like transitioning of the guard to like these new QBs. I think it's a transition in the NFL from this high-powered offense back to the defense. That's how the NFL goes. It's offense, defense, offense, defense, like from the Kurt Warner days, then to the Ravens. And then like, I think it's going back to where these teams are going to be focusing on defense. And we're going to see that, but I, I also could be very wrong. Um, <clears throat> but I think Vikings, Patriots, and I love Tom Brady, but I hope the, the Vikings win. Like that'd be so good for, for them. Like, been years and years and years they deserve a championship hell it's minnesota they need something to keep them up happy over there i like it i'm going for minnesota as well and guys i appreciate you guys listening into this quick weekend wrap up i uh hope you guys listen make sure to share it with your friends subscribe to the podcast episode 44 will be coming out this friday miles thanks for joining me no problem man have a great day i'll see you in uh, 30 seconds of work all right we'll see you guys talk to you later